with me on the Monday Minute microphone is Trent Herbert, and he comes to us from 28daysonthepill.com. And Trent, welcome to Monday Minute. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate you having me. Well, I think it's an important thing that we talk about, and why don't we start by talking about what is the main concern that you have about the birth control pill? Well, the main concern that we have is... um, I mean, many people believe that it, uh, the birth control pill just stops ovulation, but there are actually a number of other mechanisms, uh, two in particular. And the third one is of main concern, which is um, it shrinks the lining of the uterine wall, the endometrium, and um, um, a conceived child, as the child comes down and seeks to find a place to implant, um, it can be inhospitable, it can hinder implantation, and this is what the the medical literature um, tells us. And so um, if the third mechanism works, then we have an abortion. And so we're very concerned about that. And also very concerned that many people, one, are unaware or they're misinformed about that. So we're just wanting to get the word out about that. Well, absolutely. Um, Tell me, how did you become aware of uh, the birth control issue? Well, um, when I was at school, there was uh, an older um, friend who sat me down, and he told me about the health concerns about the birth control pill if I was to get married. But later on, I had heard a little wisp of that uh, the pill could cause an abortion. And so I remember talking to um, a friend who was to be a medical doctor, that was his plan, and he, I had asked him about this, and he said, uh, no, it can't work that way. So I did further research, and I came across um, Randy Alcorn's book called uh, Does the Birth Control Pill Cause Abortions? <clears throat> and he does quite a, a, a good study of the medical literature and all those things, and uh, many of the questions, and so uh, I found that to be very, um, very helpful, and so that's how I came across the issue. Um, well, good. Uh, why did you produce this particular documentary? Well, we wanted to produce this because we feel that, I mean, the truth is important and many, uh, obviously it's a very um, difficult issue, it's uncomfortable, and um, but we wanted to uh, bring the truth forward about what has happened, uh, especially in the evangelical community. And uh, the you know, interview those who have spoken to the issue as well as the other side. And we also um, know that uh, in Christ there is forgiveness. Um, and so I think a lot of people, they're afraid to look at this issue because of the the consequences of accepting the facts as they stand. And so we also want to come with compassion and say that in Christ, no matter what's happened um, in individuals' lives, that through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, that we can have forgiveness. And um, and so the Bible says the truth shall set you free. And so uh, we just wanted to, to do this, to have the truth out there. And, and we believe in Christ there's freedom. Well, and as you and I have talked, um, every time I ever mention this on the air, we would be blasted with hate mail. What has been the reaction to your documentary? Well, I think there's been obviously some some resistance, but I mean, we've really just tried to look at the facts, and I mean, it's right there in the literature, and so um, I don't know if I've gotten hate mail or anything of that nature, but uh, certainly some resistance, but also some very positive um reactions and and those I mean I remember a young lady at uh, a conference we were at and she was uh, was in tears but she spent about a whole year she said looking and researching and and uh, really not wanting obviously to believe um, that this was true but um, went through that process of of uh, coming to that point where she said yeah this is this is the truth and so um, yeah I mean there there have been um, resistance, but mainly what I've noticed is silence, that people, um, if they're opposed to this, because we saw it in our documentary to interview doctors, um, I think we mentioned up towards 20 plus and uh, didn't want to talk about it. So that was, to me, that was very telling. Yes. Well, uh, what have been some of the bright spots you've seen? Well, I think the bright spots have been that, um, you know, the truth of this is getting out there as I meet people. 
There are lots of people who have heard about the issue, but, um, you know, they may go to their doctor and get a different perspective and say, no, that it can't work this way. And so I think the bright spots are that the word is spreading, that uh, the people are talking about it and being concerned about it more. And I've come across it. There are many different perspectives on on this, but uh, it's exciting to see those who are concerned um, starting those conversations and... um, and I think that that's that's uh, important. So that's, well, what thing. would you yeah? What would you encourage uh, individuals to do about the pill? Well, I think when they hear it, I mean, one of the reasons why we've done this is we feel a moral responsibility, um, not only for ourselves. I mean, Jesus said, "Love your neighbor as yourself," and so. In the body of Christ, when we come across this information, I mean, we're not dealing with this or that, like a small issue. We're dealing with a life and death issue. So I feel a moral responsibility personally to inform other people because it's something if my wife and I didn't know about, we would want to know about. And so um, we would just encourage people to do their research. Um, I mean, you can look at Randy Alcorn's uh, book there, and uh, you know, if people want to um, watch the documentary, then then they can see what's there. But not to push it away in fear. To look at it squarely, look at the facts, and do research. On our website, we have um, you know a list of resources where people can go and and study it and look it up. So and not just to take uh, a doctor's word for it, because we know that. Um, you know, they they have so much that they have to deal with, and and obviously yes. it's a very uncomfortable issue for them. Right. But, um, right. We it's best to do our research. We need to be informed. Well, certainly. Well, for more information, where can your listener to this program go? Mm-hmm. Well, we do have our website. Uh, it's twenty eight days on the pill dot com. I mean, on there, there's a resource list. There's a short version of the video. The whole documentary is on there for for free, you know, to to be able to watch. And so, um, yeah, we just encourage people to watch the video, to pass the link on. And that, uh, as as Dr. Moeller said, you know, every evangelical woman, and our hope would be beyond that, would know about this issue and be informed. Well, as you mentioned, this video and all the research is available at www.28daysonthepill.com. And um, why don't you, Trent, take a moment, and we're going to show this short video as part of this presentation. So why don't you introduce this video? Well, this is uh, 28 Days on the Pill, short version. And basically it goes through, talks about some interviews of what what people know about the pill, and then it uh, seeks to clearly explain how the pill works. All right. Well, uh, then without further ado, let's watch this video. So I read through that and was just really shocked and surprised and wondering how I had never heard anything about that before. No, I don't, women, uh, in my, in general, women are not being informed. And what I'm suggesting is that sometimes the doctors just don't think about it as an issue. You know, that is almost pathetic that I don't really know. It's probably an issue of a lot of people is that they don't really understand how it works. They may know that it does, it helps you not to get pregnant, but they, they may not necessarily know like the background health of this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it has something to do with hormones, mm-hmm. and I've been told that it can trick your body thinking that you're pregnant already. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And I was never told by your doctors anything. And I think that's part of the reason that there's so many healthcare professionals that don't know about this debate, this controversy, this theory, but so many women don't know, and, and we could also say so many husbands don't know, and so many moms and dads don't know, and so many pastors don't know, and, and so many Christian leaders don't know. I heard about it from my partner. I was practicing in Kissimmee, Florida, a little town near Orlando. My partner came back from a conference and said, I've heard that the birth control pill can cause abortions. Have you ever heard this? I said, absolutely not. In fact, I don't think they can. And he said, well, here's some literature. Why don't you read it? So I read it, studied it, and I came back to him, and I said, his name's John Hartman. I said, John, I think this is a bunch of rubbish. And he said, well, why don't you prove it? I guess it's 
stops the female from the egg with the sperm to fertilize. Um, I can't say I really know for sure how birth control works. I know it has something to do with adjusting your hormone levels, um, but beyond that, I'm not really sure how it works. And I haven't gotten pregnant, so I guess that it works to the best of my knowledge. It stops you from ovulating. Okay. Um, so you still have your period, but it's not the same as if you were not on the pill, I guess. Yeah. The woman's normal menstrual cycle involves the ovary, cervical mucus, and the uterine lining. In a normal cycle, a woman releases an egg every month due to the natural hormones estrogen and progesterone. For a woman on the pill, the artificial hormones usually prevent ovulation. Secondly, in a normal cycle, the cervical mucus changes to improve sperm migration. For a woman on the pill, the cervical mucus thickens to prevent sperm penetration. Thirdly, the natural hormones in a normal cycle cause the lining of the uterus to build up in preparation for a newly conceived child to implant. For a woman on the pill, the artificial hormones cause the lining to shrink and do not allow it to mature properly. So if the first two mechanisms of the pill fail and the woman does ovulate and conceive, implantation of a new child may be hindered, which would be an abortion. Many medical textbooks pharmaceutical manuals, and government resources include the third mechanism. The CPS is the Canadian drug reference for healthcare professionals. Almost all of the entries for oral contraceptives mention changes in the endometrium. Now, when we went to the pharmacies and got the patient information which comes in the pill packages, the inserts that do mention how the pill works only give two mechanisms of action. Inhibition of ovulation, thickening of cervical mucus, leaving out the effects on the endometrium. The Physician's Desk Reference is the American Drug Manual for Healthcare Providers. All of the pharmaceutical companies which gave entries for oral contraceptives mentioned the three mechanisms. When we looked at the American inserts, we found all three mechanisms under the clinical pharmacology section. However, in the information for the patient section, there was no mention of how the pill works. That when we were doing our research, we found that in the physician's desk reference, every birth control pill is required to print the mechanism of action, how the birth control pill works. And the PDR says there's three mechanisms. One, decreases ovulation, two, thickens the cervical mucus, three, alters the endometrium so that implantation is less likely. But what about the handouts that are given to women that are also required by the Food and Drug Administration? When we did our study, all of the birth control pills except one excluded that information. They said, decreases ovulation, thickened cervical mucus. But in the information given to women, it did not say that the endometrium could be altered. We wrote every one of those companies as part of our study. None of them gave us an answer. Since then, those handouts have been changed, but not for the better. Now, none of them, to my knowledge, none of them mention any of the effects in the patient education. They ignore it. And I think that's part of the reason that not only so many healthcare professionals, but so many women just don't know about this issue, about this controversy.